Hi everybody, we're here at the Count Basie Teen and College Film Fest in Red Bank, New Jersey. We are so excited to be here. We just finished interviewing all of our students. These are all students from the state of New Jersey and we are just so thrilled to get to know them, to interview them, see what their passions are. We are having a blast here and we wanted to share these interviews with you. They're students who are inspired and creating amazing things and changing the way our industry works already. So enjoy the interviews. My name is Chris Zhao. I'm from Bridgewater Garden High School. I'm a senior. Um, I'm going to Brown University next year. Congratulations. Yes, I am a filmmaker. I, I guess I can talk about how I got into it. I think that's an interesting story. So the way I got into filmmaking was I picked up my mom's camcorder in, I think, fifth grade. <laughs> and I, I wanted to be like the next Dude Perfect. You know Dude Perfect? Like they do like these trick shots yep. and they get like millions of views. So I was like, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be the next Dude Perfect. And I sat out with my friends and we started doing these like water bottle flip trick shots all over like my parents and their parents' houses. And I would film them on this dinky little camcorder <laughs> with like a plastic tripod. And I, I put them on a YouTube channel. And like, unfortunately, I didn't get millions of views mm. or all the brand deals I wanted. But um, I ended up falling in love with this process of making these videos, planning them, shooting them, uh, editing them, and then like posting them and seeing like everyone's reactions. Granted, like kids are honest and like they weren't like, they, they, you know, they didn't say like, oh my God, you're so good. But like, <laughs> It was just funny, like like they would like laugh or like they'd be like, oh, this is kind of cool. Yeah. And yeah. as I like sort of got into like middle school and high school, I really, really started enjoying this process of making videos on YouTube. I didn't even make short films or narrative films. It was just like doing funny stuff with my friends. And right around freshman year, I got into narrative filmmaking because my media teacher at high school, he was like, oh, you should enter this film festival. And I always wanted to make a short film because... Um, I, I got so into like filmmaking and video, like video production that like I saw like, oh, people make short films. Um, and so I think I made a short called High School Diffusal. And my media teacher was like, oh, you should enter in Count Basie because um, we have yet to have a selection from this school yet. And it'd be really great. And I was like, OK, maybe I'll be the first to do it. So I entered it and I got selected. And I actually won the audience award that year. Nice. Um, Congrats. Yeah. That was so freshman year? Freshman year. Everyone was like, wow, this freshman just just got in and was the first first one to do it. Uh, I work with people at the Montclair State University, and I've been making films with uh, local filmmakers, people there, and yeah. You're getting out there. Yeah. yeah. Man. So tell us about the film that you entered this year. It's called Scores. Score. Yeah. It was amazing. Like, Thank you. I loved it. Thank I thought so it was much. so personal. Yeah. Um, it was such a great story. Like, but I'm not going to talk about it. You talk about it. Tell us how you came up with this idea. Um, why this story? I always wanted to make a film about my journey as a musician. I grew up playing piano from like second grade, and I was sort of, I wouldn't say forced to forced to play, but I certainly didn't enjoy it. And I can um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but there was a time in maybe late middle school to early high school where it kind of clicked for me. Yeah. And I became like very passionate about, you know, late 19th century, late 18th century classical music, which no one really cared for. And if you did care for it, you were known as like the weird person. Debussy. Yeah, something like romantic that, right? Or... Yeah, rom romantic classical music. Yep. And I really wanted to portray my, my journey, my struggle through a short film because I feel like up until this point, all my stories are a little bit autobiographical and what, what I experience, I try to put on the screen. And um, I had tried to make a music film in eighth grade, but things didn't work out. I tried again in like 10th grade, it didn't work out. I, I always kept writing and, and trying to figure out how to make this story work because I didn't want it to be like, you know, a documentary or something too big. I want, you know, it had to like fit what I could do. And I just never could pull the resources together to really make it work. Like, you know, I wanted these judges, I wanted like a stage and, and I needed all these people. And in ninth grade, I, I was just shooting with me and my friends and I didn't have the resources. But um, the sort, this film sort of came together after, you know, you could say years of writing, 
uh, maybe at least half a year to a year writing this script that I shot. With the help of the people at Montclair, my friend Peter, um, I sort of, he, he pulled this project together and I, I really did the best I could. So I'm really happy about it, yeah. Well, I thought it was beautifully shot, beautifully crafted, edited together. Acted. Thank you acted. so much. Oh, yeah. yeah, acting, Thank you. obviously the playing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was a monster piece. Yeah. Right, yeah. yeah. It was very ambitious for me. I, I don't know. It, it kind of just all came together. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you showcase, obviously, the the familial pressure mm. that you face, you know, with mm-hmm. your, your parents um, and, and struggles monetarily to give your child everything that they want, everything that they dreamed of, you know? Yeah, it's it's uh, it's heavy. It's heavy stuff. Yeah, yeah, (laughs) yeah. I it's I guess the duality, if you want to call it, is like score is not just like the score of the music, but the credit score where like the credit score of the parents representing like the financial instability or pressures where you 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 can't do what you want. Like life is not always, you know, things aren't perfect. So yeah. I, uh, I remember like going into competitions and seeing those judges there and yeah. like feeling the, 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 you know, the nerves and everything waiting right. in the hallway. Like you, you captured that so well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They, they will never smile at you, by the way. They, that's never. What, no, they won't. <laughs> they won't. They won't. They like, even if, to. Yeah. They yeah. want you to feel nervous. They, want, they like yeah. push that on you. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It's not, I mean, it's the same in the acting world, guys. Yeah. <laughs> Any struggles? that you faced like making specifically obviously we heard um how you got to making it but in the process of making it um shooting right, it yeah. like what was the hardest part of the shoot the hardest part was the climactic moment where i had to act um i'm not an actor i'm not a trained actor i didn't even do theater um i just i play my roles through myself and my experiences and that's how it comes off I don't know, semi-natural, or as natural yeah. as I can do it. Yeah. Yeah. And um, for this one scene, it's like one where I'm like tearing the score up. Yeah. I was, I, I, I did a couple takes and the reason, guys, the reason you shouldn't like, don't, don't do like 14 things at once is because I'm trying to produce, direct, you know, manage everyone <laughs> and act at the same time, do craft, like, you know, this is how all India sets are, but I, my headspace is not in like, okay, like you need to play this character. It's more in like, okay, what's the next shot? We're like, how much time do we have? Right. You're managing so many things. And I think I did one more two takes and, um, my, my, my co-director, he pulls me out and he's like, this is not working. Like, let me, let me talk with you. Mm. And we stand in this hallway and he's like, Chris, this is it. (laughs) Like, like this is this is this is this is over for you. Like he knows my struggle with piano too, so he knows like not just the character, but me. I've been trying to like this is sort of my like letting go of piano, and he's like, "This is it. You know this, right? Like this is not just a film. Like you are actually like it's over for you." And right when he said that, it sort of like everything clicked for me. And when I got back in there, like I sort of gave the performance that I gave, and mm. and. It wasn't even, it didn't feel like acting for me because I was sort of like expressing that frustration that um, I felt in real life. It was authentic. Yeah. yeah. Very authentic. Yeah. And I guess that was probably the hardest part of making the film. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But grounded in truth. So. Right. Yeah. Good acting is always grounded in truth. Right. So it's pretty cool. Do you have any advice to give to either your generation <laughs> or the next generation? Um, any insights? <laughs> I think I need more advice. I, I think I'm the one that needs more advice. But um, I could <laughs> let's say I could talk to my like freshman self or my eighth grade self. I would I would have been like, what would I say? I would be like, at least I I should have reached out to more people. Like, I I obviously I owe everything to Peter. He's a film student at Montclair. Um, I reached out to him and like ninth grade 10th grade and we sort of got along and he's been on all my projects so you know this project would not have happened without him but yeah like the importance of like this networking and reaching out because if i didn't meet him on instagram none of this would have happened i would have none of this you know success where any of this would have nothing nothing would have so the lesson the lesson is don't be afraid to reach out if you see somebody that you think would be a great partner you know like it it never hurts right yeah and people are always happy to help Usually. Sorry. 
the people that you want to work with <laughs> are always happy yeah, to help. For sure. Anytime someone reaches out to me, anytime someone reaches out to Meredith and people that we've reached out to, they're like, sure. Yeah. Yeah. I'll have a conversation. Yeah. You know, I'll give you my advice. They're happy to help. I mean, I, I can't say that enough. They really yeah, are. Yeah. Any favorite films directors? Oh, this favorite is a tough one for, for childhood. It's Miyazaki from Studio Ghibli. Um, Spirited Away, Ponyo, Kiki's Delivery. I just got a shirt with Ponyo. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like immersive realism. He gives you different sides of animation that I think is, you know, quintessential for everyone to watch. I watch like pretty much all his works, so I know him really well. I could say like, okay, I am a Miyazaki fan. Yeah. But I do like work from, from Bergman, from Fincher. I've gone more into like art house cinema, so I'm looking at like, Kirawasa, Lynch, but I, I can't say I'm a fan. I haven't watched enough to really understand. That's fair. You know? Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, but Bergman, Misaki, though. Oh, my God. Yeah, oh. Seventh Seal or Persona. Oh, yeah. What are you studying at Brown? I'm studying film. Good for you. Yeah, I'm studying film. The dream was like, okay, I'm going to go to Cali. Like, I'm going to go to Cali Film School. And like, because I feel like if you're, I have this perception that if you're in Hollywood, you're just going to make it. Obviously, it's not true. It's, it's, I've heard from pretty much everyone. It's like, okay. It's about how much effort you put in. It's about what what you are doing. It's not about like where you go. It's really about what you do there, uh, like at the place you're at. Mm -hmm. And part of me, like I got rejected from all my Cali schools, film schools. So I was like, man, whatever. I, I you know, you do what you can. Part of me is like bummed out that I'm leaving New Jersey because I know this place is like, you know, becoming a very big film film uh, production place now, and it's right next to New York. Um, but I guess I'm choosing Brown because I want to learn more about humanities and, you know, philosophy and other, other subjects related to film that I think will help me. It'll Certainly. make you a better filmmaker. Right. Yes. Yeah. Yes, It'll definitely. make you having that depth of experience and knowledge. It just makes you such a richer artist. That's um, what I intend for. Yeah. So, yeah. and you know, the business isn't going anywhere. No, it's not. And Providence you is really so? close. Okay. Yeah. Um, it's not going anywhere. I was in LA for seven years. I just moved back two weeks ago with, oh, my, really? with my husband. So. Uh -huh. I know people who start here, go to LA, come back. I know people who start in LA, come here, move to Still. Idaho. Yeah. I mean, right. the world is just so different now, especially with how flexible it is to work from different places. So just meet people. Got it. Meet got people it. Okay. and keep the good ones. Okay. And it sounds like you reach out to people without any hesitation. And I, that is yeah. such a skill. Right. And it's so important. Okay. Yeah. I think Brown is an excellent Amazing. place to, to I went to acting to school with, with uh, colleagues who studied at Brown. Oh, really? And they, they were in the conservatory that I was in and they were tremendous actors. Okay. Smart people, like amazing, so many things to offer. And I think you'll be in good company. Okay. Oh, yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us at the Count Basie Teen and College Film Festival. Meredith and I had an absolute blast talking to these amazing student filmmakers. So much fun. Tune in next time on 101, a podcast.